We are 22S Radio. 22S Radio is 22SMedia.com and 88.1 FM KKJZ HD3, Long Beach, Los Angeles. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, and now a war broadcasting tag team champions of the world and a cruiserweight champion. I'm Ethan. I'm James. I'm Rob. And this is episode 144 of Beyond the Ropes. One, I'm assuming. Um, I don't. We don't keep track here. We're, we're just we just go week by week. We we, we call it in in the ring as we go. Um, of course, you can follow us on Twitter at WheelBTR Radio. Uh, at Ethan Every Ninety Five is where you can find me on Twitter. James, where can they find you? At JHW Reporter. And you can follow Rob at Rob Flores Media. Don't forget the R2 DMs for Ethan. Um, he wasn't on Raw this week either, so that's a total, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but was he on the on the post show? Isn't that yeah. kind of where we find him at this point? He's the co-host these days. He's just relegated to being the co-host. So, uh, of course, facebook.com forward slash beyond the ropes is where you find us on Facebook. And of course, YouTube, just search up Beyond the Ropes and you'll find over 140 episodes currently uploaded. We've got a lot to discuss on this week's episode. Uh, so let's get right into it. Let's start with something um, we almost talked about last week, but I stopped myself because it hadn't been confirmed at that point. Uh, there were some additional releases uh, in WWE last week. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually this week, there were a few more uh, from the production side of things. Um, so unfortunately, you know, more people lost their jobs uh, within the last 48 hours. Uh, but shortly after, I believe it might have been the next day after we recorded um, last week's episode, it had been confirmed that the artist formerly known as Velveteen Dream had been released. Literally. Uh, yeah, literally. Yeah, uh, formerly known. Uh, yeah. He did release a statement uh just a few days after that uh, via his Instagram stories. Uh, I'm going to read the full uh, statement here. Um, So this kind of gives his side of things here. Um, So this comes from his Instagram stories. I don't know if you'll be able to find it anywhere else. I mean, just search up uh, Velveteen Dream release and you can read the full thing here. Uh, Basically, he starts off saying, uh, the allegations from the April 20, 2020, uh, have affected effectively derailed any upward momentum I had professionally and has, uh, and has ultimately resulted in my termination with WWE. My name is Patrick Clark, not the Velveteen Dream. Uh, Velveteen Dream is a character that I have spent years developing, trying to bring life, trying to bring to life. The success of the Dream character relied heavily on kayfabe, my ability to blur Patrick Clark from tough enough with this over-the-top personality. The character was conceptualized the day Prince passed, April 21st, 2016. I knew nothing about him at the time. My thinking was that I could use my interpretation of Prince to create an on-screen personality vastly different from who I am as a person. Q, Velveteen Dream. A sexually ambiguous, gender-fluid, self-absorbed Devo. And as I learned more about Prince, I began to tame certain aspects of the character. Aspects that I deemed way too over the top and inconsistent with who Prince was as a performer. Now, before I unpacked, I will say I've enjoyed the many stories I've been able to share on camera and I'm grateful to the many people who trusted me with their safety and wellness. Thank you to anyone, thank you to any and everybody who enjoyed and allowed me to be my character whether you paid a ticket or walked up to me in Walmart. My goal was to provide you with the same escape that I was offered when I started, when I first started watching. Uh, My job was to play a character and to help advance storylines and drama for the fans who cared to tune in. I take any job I have seriously, which is why I've remained silent about these allegations. To me, addressing rumors would be working against an already compromised ability to sell a character I've invested so heavily in. After I'd been accused, I was given the opportunity to be in a storyline that lasted a few months, and I worked in a few segments unrelated to the story arc. But now I feel comfortable in this position to share with you the details of my accusations. The night of April 20th, 
uh, from my verified Instagram account. I posted a story to my followers, letting them know that my DMs had been open. I received a few different messages ranging from support to heckling and some inquiring about how to get started in pro wrestling. I responded to a few, but not all. And a few that I responded to one account accused me of solicitation. Uh, the account belonged to a 17-year-old aspiring wrestler, Jacob, before he deleted it. Uh, in the conversation, Jacob shared his interest in working as a wrestler one day and asked what steps would be required. I messaged a short list of things he should consider if he were serious. Physique, a promo, and a promo to start. Physique, because as an independent contractor, no one is going to make you train and eat in a way that creates an, the aesthetic of a believable pro wrestler. And promo, because our job is to sell, is to sell drama and you can't rely on someone flipping channels to stop to watch a choreographed fight. You're more, you're more likely to grab their attention looking into the camera with a strong and impassioned 30-second monologue. I also inquired about which schools he was closest to in relation to wrestling training, his weight, and his height. J Jacob explained how actions he felt messaging me and asked me to verify that it was really me. I did find it strange because I have a blue check, but as a lifelong thing, I remember meet and greets and the days I would message wrestlers hoping to be seen. So I chalked it up to innocence and sent a voice message in my Velveteen Dream voice as to keep it kayfabe. Uh, the full voice message has me asking Jacob about his height, weight, and where he trained and what school he attended, which Jacob answered back with a voice message and I continued to answer his questions until I politely wrapped up the conversation. April 21st, I woke up to notifications and tags of created screenshots and videos of a conversation that I did not have with Jacob. I immediately contacted WWE's talent relations and social media departments as to begin an investigation. Even after the investigation, WWE released a statement maintaining my innocence. The part of me that the part that hurt for me was having a personal picture that I've used in my personal life on apps being used to label me as a predator. I'm in no way of the word a predator. This is the first and only time I've been accused of any solicitation to anyone. Until I was accused of grooming by Joshua Fuller, unlike Jacob, I know Josh. I met Josh after my stint on Top Enough at a meet and greet. As we developed a friendship through a mutual trainer at GXW, Josh shared to Twitter uh, screen, screenshots of the first time we communicated through text in 2016, an autographed picture from when we met, and an extremely contradictory uh, story. Josh alleged that I made him feel comfortable but contradicts himself twice by saying I was, I was never sexual toward him. For those willing to research Josh's tweet accusing me, Josh's messages are in blue and mine are in gray. Josh claimed that he was a 16-year-old high school student graduate and that he takes yearly trips with his friends to Orlando, Florida. I doubted what he told me, yet I kept my replies diplomatic and professional. The reality of the situation is that, is that I was very helpful and respectful to Josh. Um, and it goes on for a little bit up oh, here. We're almost done. So I'll just finish it up here. Um, so after that, uh, the text message here, let's see. Okay. Uh, Josh lives with his grandparents in rural S Southern Maryland. Josh got a concussion in 2016 again, and against my advice, insisted on wrestling. My worry came from Josh se uh, severely injuring himself, specifically his brain. I said that I suggested he take time off to train. Uh, from training to see a doctor, he declined because he believed he could work through the concussion. And I cut all communication with him in 2018 because I did not want to be partially responsible uh, had he worsened his injury. So to have him accuse me of predatory behavior because I chose not to help was spiteful. Josh and Jacob are two of many people that I've helped, yet these are the only two who found me to be malicious and predatory on how I go about helping others. What? Uh, Okay, so what wasn't shared at the time, Josh Fuller, Josh Fuller reached out to Jacob over social media before Josh put out his own accusation. When this came out, Josh Fuller temporarily deleted his Twitter account, which is important because in all, social me in all the social media confusion, Josh Fuller is the only one who suggested that an investigation had not been done and that he had not been contacted. 
Jacob deleted his social media after he was outed for being a member of an anti-Black group chat. Uh, there is a public forum, WWE LPSG stars, where people are bullying, selling, sharing, ex- and sharing explicit photos and videos of multiple wrestlers, and no one has done anything to take the site down. All in all, this entire experience defamed my character and ultimately accomplished what it sought out to do, and that was to see me released. My hope is that over time, people can put two and two together and realize that all the allegations surrounding me were baseless and untrue from jump. I, feel sh- I felt strongly about not needing to defend myself on social media for a while now, but I understand the audience I work for and those who know me deserve clarity. I'm thankful for the opportunities afforded to me and the memories that I have, uh, I have as a receipt. God has always had me and he always will. Dream is officially over but Patrick Clark lives to fight another day. Um, so that comes from wrestlinginc.com. Um, I read the whole thing there um, longer than I had expected, but basically went through the entire thing as to get some clarity from his side because he, I mean, he didn't say, obviously he mentioned he never said anything up until now. Um, so yeah, he's, he's officially finished with WWE. Don't know if any other wrestling company is going to want to try and scoop them up, especially under these, these you know, accusations, uh, regardless of whether they were real or not. Um, so it's an interesting thing. So, I mean, he's, he's young. He's 20, what, 4, 23, 24 still. So, yeah, yeah he's, he's still pretty young. So he's got time if, you know – this is still his passion. So who knows? Yeah. It's just, it's just interesting. I mean, well, so, I mean, I don't know if it's better that we have like his side now. I don't know. Like, I don't know how, how to really like feel about that. Just, just because now you, I mean, I really, you know, you really can't take from one side what is said anyway, but now that you have both sides, now you really don't know, but, I mean, yeah, I mean, so just to, I don't know, pick through what Velveteen, I'm just going to call him Velveteen, Patrick, whatever, what Mm -hmm. Patrick said. Um, Like the thing with the picture, uh, yeah, I mean, there's been several times, like Xavier Woods, Paige, and a few others, uh, Charlotte, I think, and... uh, There's been many. There's been many. many. um, Where they've had pictures and stuff put out there. I mean, for me, it's just kind of like, where was that picture? So, I mean, we're not trying to play Sherlock Holmes here, but it's kind of like, where was that picture before? Like, how did it get out if it didn't come out from him? Like, for, from those text messages or whatever, I guess is the thing for me. He said it was from it was from a website or whatever. I mean, I don't expect someone like Patrick to say, I sent this picture to so-and-so in this year, and, and you know, how it got out after, I don't know. Um, but... I mean, that's kind of the thing. It's kind of like, is, was that picture already out there? Should this have, like, is the, if the picture comes out as a surprise, people are like, oh, like, it's like, and we've seen this photo already, then that's one thing. But I mean, if, if he's the only person who has this photo, then to me, that would kind of suggest maybe he did send the picture, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, you know, but, it, you know, it, it's just, we've talked about it a lot. I thought it was good that you did kind of get the whole statement out there. I hadn't really been able to read the whole thing. Um, prior to this so i don't know it's just a tough situation i mean i mean what what can wwe do um i did find it interesting that he was said he was the one who approached wwe about putting an investigation about it um i hadn't heard anything about you know one of the accusers i guess you can say being in a in a anti-racist or anti-black group or something like that i hadn't heard of that before um so don't really know how true that is or what i mean it I guess if that's the case, but I don't know. It's just interesting. It's just one of those things. I mean, like you said, he's still kind of young. Maybe he could bounce back and he can be in wrestling again. Who knows? It's kind of hard to get out of something. I mean, I don't think there's one thing you can do. It's not like you can do charity work and find yourself on the other side of this situation being any better off. Uh, Rob mentioned Joey Ryan and some others um, who are kind of in that now, um, you know, uh, list you know dark or, or you know blacklisted more or less but I don't know I mean I don't really know how you come back from this I don't know what what you really do I mean it's it's kind of surprising some people who, who fall into this situation do manage to come back or or you know are 
whatever. I don't know. It's you, you're surprised sometimes by who can bounce back from certain things, but you know, it is what it is. He's still young. Maybe even if it's not even in wrestling, he can, uh, better himself and, 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 you know, be a better person for it. Um, at, at the end of the day, just doing, maybe doing something else, who knows, but yeah, he's yeah, definitely, I mean, a couple of years ago, he was definitely sought out as one of the future stars. He uh, really was. He really was. So, uh, unfortunate it's gone this way. So, uh, we'll, maybe we'll see what he does next. Maybe not. We'll see. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Another release, or I guess mutual uh, parting ways. This was a statement from WWE yesterday uh, as we're recording this. Uh, WWE and Adnan Burke have mutually agreed to part ways. WWE thanks Adnan for his work. Uh, Adnan did quote tweet this with saying, thanks to WWE for a wonderful opportunity. The week we travel along with my other jobs was a grind for me and my family. I am grateful to everyone with the company, especially uh, Corey Graves and Byron Saxton for being such fantastic teammates. Uh, And earlier today, as we were recording this, it had been confirmed that we did get already a replacement uh, for Adnan uh, WWE announced just three hours ago that, you know, we're recording. Uh, WWE announced today that Jimmy Smith uh, will debut as a play-by-play voice for WWE Raw starting this Monday, uh, May 31st, as uh, this episode will air. Uh, recently, Smith served as an analyst for NXT, where he hosted NXT TakeOver pre-show panels uh, and worked for uh, special projects on the Black and Gold brand. He is also the daily host of Sirius XM's Unlocking the Cage and was the host of American Ninja Warrior on G4. So um, there we go. A transition uh, from one sports uh, commentator to another. Yeah. Um, so again, just with Adnan, I mean, it was, I guess it only had been a month. I guess I was kind of under the impression he was no, I guess I, he, I thought he may have just been full-time in WWE and Raw. I guess that's obviously not the case. I did look at his Twitter bio after you told me that there was uh, that news out there and I did see, he does have a number of other things going on. So it makes sense. I mean, and for whatever travel he may think, you know, he, he was up against, I mean, or if if he thought the travel was bad now, it's only going to get worse. And maybe that's what he, he was, um, it was was kind of brought to his attention. Maybe I I would assume you would have known this already, or he would have known this already, but, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the dates and stuff, them getting back in front of a live crowd soon. But yeah, I mean, if you look at that schedule or you just know how the schedule works, I mean, it, it's, you know, a lot, the case can be made basketball and, and an NBA schedule is pretty crazy. I mean, it's not that Ad, and Adnan was uh, strictly covering uh, NBA, but I mean, WWE is, is three or four times a week. And when you're not performing on the camera, you're more or less on the road. Maybe you're at home once or twice uh, a week. So um, if you have a family, if you have, you know, younger kids, it's tough. So with the other jobs that's going on and things opening back up, maybe some of the other jobs are getting a little bit more busier. Uh, maybe you just realize it was a little too much. Obviously, mental health is a big thing right now. And um, he I don't know if he he specifically mentioned that, but obviously um, that would take quite a toll on anybody having a schedule that busy. So uh, wish him nothing but the best. We'll see what comes next for him. Absolutely. And um, yeah, I mean, it- texted you i guess uh, the other day when the news broke mm-hmm. uh, yeah he really hadn't been doing a whole lot of commentary the last couple of weeks he was basically throwing in a few one-liners every time uh Ray, yeah you know byron set him up so i uh, wish him all the best success and looking forward to hearing another voice uh we'll see how he works out uh uh but when we return we're gonna talk uh some big wwe news as well as smackdown nxt and um the debut of someone new. Mm. Uh, all that and more right here on BTR. We are 22S Radio. 22S Radio is 22SMedia.com and 88.1 FM KKJZ HD3, Long Beach, Los Angeles. Welcome back to episode 144 of Beyond the Ropes. I'm your host, Ethan Jordan, alongside the analyst, James Williams, and of course, producer Rob Flores. Of course, we're doing this virtually via Zoom. And... Um, Hopefully we'll be back in the studio very soon. But until then, um, I mean, thing, things are changing, guys. Things are changing. You know, things are opening up again. It was just announced early today that uh, Disneyland was opening up to people out of state, which I don't right. like because I haven't gone to Disneyland yet. So 
you know, now other people can go. What's what's up with that? Um, yeah, I mean, sorry. what you had? Yeah, like three or four weeks, right? It's been it's been a good little minute. I was waiting yeah, until I fully vax. I was waiting until fully vax. Not there yet. Next week. But, you, you um, but WWE isn't going to be waiting for much longer. Mm. That's uh, May 26th. Uh, they officially announced. I lied. That was the newer ones. But last week, they officially announced uh, that they were going on a 25-city summer tour. They were going back on the road starting July 16th. Of course, uh, starting with Friday Night Smackdown in uh texas yep and i believe it's so you have the dates right yeah so uh, july the 16th they'll have that first smackdown in the toyota center uh which is located in houston texas Mm -hmm. um and then if if you don't mind we can stop here on the second one they're going to stay in texas they're going to head over to fourth worth uh to fort worth uh the dickies arena where they're going to hold money in the bank on july 18th we kind of talked about that a little bit last week the reason why i kind of want to stop here for a minute and talk about it is because we kind of did talk about um, the whole thing with the crowd in the arena mm-hmm. uh, or, or how they how they didn't have that. And then they, they went with the the WWE building, which we may have to follow up with later because weren't they getting rid of that building? Um, anyways, uh, wasn't, yeah, wasn't there? I think there was like news on that, right? Weren't they selling that building? No. There was like a whole thing. Like right after. Anyway. No, I was like, I'm, we, that totally just kind of got forgotten about. <laughs> yeah, that was like a thing, right? Um, <clears throat> anyway, so. Uh, we probably, yeah, we probably did touch a lot on uh, a bit on it last week, but I think it that you know will be a good maybe there's some direction, maybe there's a little bit more excitement we can we can kind of lean on, especially for that money in the bank. And maybe that you know the reason why they held off on money in the bank, which is what's used usually this last usually the next pay per view, right? I think, uh, usually June, yeah, but June. we're getting the because we're getting held in the cell early. Is that the we're case? getting held in the cell early for in June? That's that's the next one. And then, yeah, we're getting money in the bank in July. Okay. It's usually been around June, July, but I guess, yeah, they definitely put it closer um, to summer time this time. So, still, still good though. So, I mean, so they're going to come off that money in the bank the next night. They're going to they're head over to Dallas, Texas, the American Airlines Arena, uh, American Airlines Center uh, for a Raw um, on the 19th. So, they're going to, you know, they're going to start up those first three, as we, maybe we kind of mentioned last week in Texas before they really kind of open up and start hitting the road. Um, the new ones that I believe were announced today was what July 23rd Smackdown in Cleveland. They're going to go July 26th, an episode of raw in Kansas city. And then they're going to go July 30th, uh, to end that week in the target center in Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota. Um, so, you know, they're hitting three different States there. I mean, you know, they kind of test the waters there a little bit in Texas, uh, maybe, you know, kind of get things going a little bit, remember how things used to be, but they're going to hit the ground running. Um, Obviously, it looks like NXT is not going to be in that mix, um, at least from from what I have in front of me here. Um, who knows what what the plan will be for them? Hopefully, they get a little bit more. They get some more people in that building, just because it. You know, I'll talk a little bit about a segment that I think you'll be very happy about. Um, right. That maybe could have used some crowd noise, and, and you, you might you might be proud that maybe I'm switching sides now. Um, <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about it a little bit later. Hold um, so what, what, what more do you have on on uh, on SmackDown and, and the touring and everything that they have going on? Uh, yeah, I do want to spend some time on SmackDown because it sometimes gets forgotten in the mix. Um, just because it's the way we are scheduling, it. It, it will get forgotten. And it was a really solid episode of SmackDown as we're recording this. Yes, uh, and get to that point. Now, give me. I don't mean to interrupt you, but you know. It may get a little forgotten here just because the scheduling, the way things go, we usually come off a fresh Monday Night Raw or a pay-per-view or even NXT. But um, SmackDown is actually kind of winning the ratings from within Mm -hmm. Um, this, you know, that May 21st episode that you're going to be talking about here. Mm -hmm. Um, A 1.9 million, uh, which was, let me see my notes here. Um, Viewership was up from the week before um, just by, you know, um, almost by a percent, really. Um, from the previous week, but it's uh, also only the second time uh, since moving to the Thunderdome that they've actually dropped the below 2 million viewers. And that comes from F4W online, which is Brian Alvarez and Dave Meltzer and et cetera, et cetera. But um, I just found it interesting though, from, from that note there that it's only the second time they've been under two point or under 2 million um, mm-hmm. considering Ross will be the flagship show. Uh, NXT is supposed to be, you know, this hot brand. NXT, I mean, SmackDown is leading the way. 
Um, maybe we need to kind of get our act together a little bit, Ethan, and talk a little bit more about SmackDown. But I mean, when you think about it, they have all your favorites. I mean, we talk about them enough, honestly. You got to get your Tribal Chief segment in. You got to get your Seth Rollins segment in. So we talk about your guys. And I, look, I'll give them credit. Maybe that's part of the reason why the rating is so high for SmackDown, because they got guys like that. But at the same time, too, I'm sure it helps because I remember this was a thing maybe even back in the day when I was younger um, on UPN, which I just remembered. Um, SmackDown being on maybe that local channel on that Fox channel helps them a little bit. You know, for people, I would say for people who don't have cable, but I don't know who has cable anymore. Um, So maybe that's not even a factor anymore. But I like to think maybe it it has a small part in it. Uh, Maybe, I don't know. Maybe in two, I think maybe even just three hours of Raw Maybe that third hour, which I did see the numbers for, but not going to get too deep into, maybe dragging some of that overall number down for Raw. But again, just surprising for me to see SmackDown uh, leading the way for WWE. Absolutely. And you have the the Parade of Champions kick off uh, the May 21st edition of SmackDown. Or okay. as uh, Paul Heyman said it, the Parade of Title Holders. Uh, because uh, the only true champion is Roman Reigns, and he was the only mm. one not out there. Uh, it was basically a segment, I guess, just to set up a six-woman tag match that happened between the new tag team champions, Natalia, mm-hmm. uh, Tamina, and uh, women's champion, SmackDown women's champion, Bianca Belair, taking on uh, the former champs, Shayna Baszler, Nia Jax, and Bayley. Uh, the heels ended up picking up the victory there. Um, one thing to note with that parade of champions, uh, Apollo cut a nice promo saying he was going to defeat his opponents because he did have a fatal four-way uh, intercontinental championship title defense later on in the in the main event. Um, so that was cool. Apollo in the main event? Absolutely. It was the main event. We'll talk more about that in a minute there. Uh, but we, we got our king, our king back, Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, okay. And he's now got... He's got now got someone uh, helping him out. Uh, of course, I'm talking about uh, the one and only. Um, well, hold on, let me let me get it in here. The one and only Rick Boogs. Uh, Excuse me, who? Rick Boogs. You don't remember Rick Boogs? Uh, he's he appeared on NXT like two or three times. Um, like two years ago is when he made his really moment. Uh, playing air guitar or an air drums and he had you know screaming uh, but he, he helped Shinsuke with his entrance he played the electric guitar in Shinsuke's entrance and okay. he helped Shinsuke get the win over Corbin um, distracting him with the with the guitar and uh, Shinsuke walked away with the crown again so, so Shin, is Shinsuke the heel here and are we getting a, a Baron Corbin face turn is that what's happening no this is just Okay. You know, um, like, oh, this is this is face stuff here. No, this is face stuff. Even though, yeah. yes, I mean, it's just we're we're just you know, you know, we're having fun with Corbin here. That's what they're doing. Okay. It was Eric Bugenhagen, I think, when he first started. Then it was uh, Boo Boogies or something. Now it's Boogs. So right. Boogs is a little easier to okay. Boogs is a little easier to, to get out there for sure. Um, next up. We had the parade of champion Roman Reigns because he had his own parade here. Mm. And you know what was a great moment here? Our tribal well, chief. Okay. Uh, he surprised Paul Heyman with the opportunity to talk about Roman Reigns. You see, because Roman Reigns wasn't going to do it himself. He said he's too humble. He okay. says he teaches his children humility. So he said he wouldn't do it, but he gave. Paul Heyman, the honor, and Paul was so surprised. He, he, you should have seen him. He was so happy. Uh, so we, you know, Paul Heyman ran through the, the victims of Roman Reigns since uh, Roman came back. You know, we talked about uh, scaring the fiend off to Monday Night Raw. Talked about humanizing the monster among men, Braun Strowman. Okay. Talked about uh, baptizing Jay Uso into the into the family. I talked about KOing <laughs> Kevin Owens. Okay. Talked about uh, you know humiliating Edge and Daniel Bryan in the most dominant victory at WrestleMania. Okay. We talked about retiring Daniel Bryan. So I mean, it was a great parade of champion. 
and then it got ruined, of course, by Cesaro. Um, this great line once his music started hitting. Um, what was it? I'm trying to remember. And Roman Reigns saying, uh, "Turn that bum's music off. Nobody wants to see." It. <laughs> uh, I sent you. I I sent you the post on Instagram. So. Oh, yeah. I did see that right before we got on the show. Yeah. I have to look at. That. I have to watch it. I saw the notification, but didn't get a chance to watch it yet. It was great there. Um, but of course, as Cesaro was coming down the ring, our Lord and Savior, the visionary Seth mm-hmm. Rollins, came out, attacked Cesaro as curb stomped him on the on the steel grate and left him laying once again. Um, however, backstage, um, you know, he seemed a little sympathetic. You know, he's like, I don't know what happened. I blacked out, you know. And then as we see, you know, Cesaro being stretchered out, uh, <laughs> Seth then goes. Uh, to him and you know he's saying it's all his fault you know why are you doing this why are you making me do this so Cesaro needs to get in line here I don't know what he's doing he's causing Seth to do this um this is all Cesaro's fault that's all I gotta say so that's um, all you gotta say we gotta I mean I just want, I just I guess I'm kind of curious to know where they're gonna go with all of this um I mean we're we gonna see a tag team or I mean we're we gonna see Roman and Seth together again or like who that would be great. Does, does Cesaro need two feuds? What like are we trying to bury Cesaro? I, I'm assuming we're not trying to bury Cesaro here. Cesaro but is totally gonna lose a feud with Seth. <laughs> but he's getting stretched a little thin. Like, I mean, like you, you know, I mean, first of all, I mean, like he's almost in two different sto- not in two different storylines, but he's in two storylines that are crossing. And you can have like both of those guys in, in Ro- Roman and Seth have them. Why can't they have their own storyline? Like, what, what is the deal? First off, I think Cesaro's in the storyline on his own. Roman's not involved. He's done with him. Roman has made it clear he wants nothing to do with Cesaro. So Cesaro's the one, you know. (laughs) So Cesaro's holding on to a storyline while Seth's trying to continue. (laughs) Yes, exactly. So that's the whole issue there. Uh, We have the black sheep of the family, Jimmy Uso, somehow (laughs) getting a tag team match with Jay to face the Street Profits. It'll be a fantastic match, but Obviously, our tribal truth does not approve the situation. Um, I, I agree. I'm glad you agree. I'm glad you agree. Yeah. Um, anyways, um, let's see. Our main event. Let's talk about it. I don't know if I missed anything else here, but... Uh, oh, Dominic Mysterio beat Robert Roode, so I'm sure Rob loved that. Um, so that happened. And then, yes, we got our Fatal 4-Way. Uh, match for the Intercontinental Championship between Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Big E, and Apollo Crews. Phenomenal match. Uh, definitely go out of your way to check this out. Um, the match ended with Big E almost getting the victory until we get the return of one Alistair Black. Alistair Black came out mm. from smoke and hit a black mass on Big E straight on the jaw. It looked amazing. Um, and then uh, Apollo picked up the victory, retaining the title. And uh, we got closed out with Aleister Black kind of giving an evil grin. So looks like they're building That's up. Why was, okay. Uh, I, was wondering, I was wondering why that was the main event. Makes sense. So yeah. a fantastic match. Um, so we're going to see more Aleister Black and Biggie very soon. So it was a really solid yeah. episode of SmackDown. Um, looking forward to what they do next. Uh, let's get into some NXT. We'll, we'll start it off. Um, we don't know why Biggie was a target rub yet. Well, I'm sure we'll find out on SmackDown. Uh, although I, I did appreciate Alistair's post on Instagram the next day of him posting and the caption saying, it's a new day. Yes, it is. Um, <laughs> that's cool. that's tough. That was great. So we had NXT, of course, mm-hmm. let's get into it. Uh, kicked off with a tag team match between the NXT Women's Champion, Raquel Gonzalez, and Dakota Kai, taking on uh, Rob's favorite team of Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart. Uh, this was a really good match. Uh, better than I expected. I don't know. This might have been their best match because they faced each other actually for the tag titles because Ember and Shotzi did beat them for the titles before. So mm-hmm. I thought this match was better than that one. Um, it ended up with uh, Shotzi. Uh, picking up the victory, or it might have been Ember. Don't remember. Dakota Kai got, got pinned. Mm. Uh, and then um, Raquel uh, left them both lanes, specifically Shotzi, as Ember was forced to watch uh, there. So that happened. Um, 
And of course, so after that match, uh, we did get, I see here as I'm scrolling, by the way, I'm getting uh, this recap from Sports Kita. So a nice little recap here. Uh, credit to them. All right. So after that match, we did get uh, a promo from Tommaso Ciampa and uh, Timothy Thatcher. Mm-hmm. Basically, they're going after the GYV, Grizzled Young Veterans. Said they got right. ahead of themselves a bit, going after the tag team titles, you know, because they had unfinished business. So uh, they cut a nice promo there. That happened. Uh, they said round three is coming up next. Um, you, you, so you mentioned the tag team champions there. I saw they kind of got involved a little bit, um, making the save and helping, uh, was it Bryson Reed? Am I... Bronson. Bronson Reed, yeah. Bronson Reed, who's our N- NA champion. Um, Brand new. And so, so basically yeah. he came out, uh, he... He cut a promo, kind of. He started. He looked really good. You want, first of all, you want to talk about people in drip? We're gonna say uh, Reed didn't look good. Tell I me mean, wrong. He was wearing a basic blazer. Oh. It was a It was a blazer and jeans. Come on, everyone looks, does. Looks good doing that for ten years. Come on, looks now. good to me. Uh, he was interrupted by Legado the del Fantasma. So mm-hmm. it's like uh, Santos isn't waiting for you know another cruiserweight match or anything. He's moved on. He's now going after the NA title. Uh, he basically said a Canada doesn't matter. <laughs> he said he specifically wants the title because it represents America and Mexico. Um, and then I think Joaquin Phoenix mentioned, oh, what about Canada? He said, we already talked about that. They don't matter. So there you go. Uh, take that, Bret Hart. Um, yeah. They went in to jump Bronson Reed. And as you mentioned, MSK made the save. Uh, next week, we're going to be getting MSK defending those tag titles against mm. uh Ra- Raul Mendez of uh, Mendoza and uh, Joaquin Wild. So that should be interesting. We could be seeing new champions. Uh, but when we return, we're going to talk uh, a new NXT debut as well as the rise of a superstar James, all that and more right here on Beyond the Ropes. We are 22S Radio. 22S Radio is 22SMedia.com and 88.1 FM, KKJZ, HD3, Long Beach, Los Angeles. Welcome back to episode 144 of Beyond the Ropes. Of course, we are doing this virtually. Um, and we're talking NXT. And of course, we're talking about the return of the beautiful Bobby Fish taking mm-hmm. on uh, the bruiserweight, uh, Pete Dunn. I don't know why he made that face change. Was it really a beautiful return? I don't know what I saw. Well, I'm talking, about, I'm talking about him. He's beautiful. The way, it's I mean... Hard. The way his first match ended wasn't beautiful. It was a good match. Wanted, I, I mean, you can ask the 698,000 that watched NXT, and they'll tell you it was not a beautiful ending for Mr. Bobby. But it's going to lead to something. I feel it. I feel it in my bones. So um, let's talk about this match against Pete Dunn. Uh, basically, uh, Pete Dunn kind of beat Bobby Fish into the mat a little early here. Mm-hmm. Um, he went, uh, I know he went after Dunn for the Fujiwara arm bar. Arm bar. Um, mm-hmm. He hit a spine buster on Dunn. Um, but Dunn kept going on that surgically repaired tricep of uh, fish. Um, ultimately, it was uh, a nice little counter. I believe he was going for like an arm bar that he countered ultimately into hitting the, the better end and got the victory over uh, Bobby Fish there. After the match, Oni Lorcan decided to get involved and go after the tricep of Bobby Fish. Mm. Um, if this is leading to a tag team thing, first off, I got to say, I'm very disappointed in Cool Kyle. Uh, last week, uh, Bobby Fish made his return and made the save when mm. Kyle was outnumbered, and this week there was no sign of Cool Kyle. Mm, uh, he's too cool. Maybe he's too cool. I don't know, but I mean, I I would be totally okay with Roger Strong coming back and helping Bobby Fish because they don't have any beef with one another either. Um, they were kind of experts I mean, here. I mean, I would think that, I would think that would have I would think that would have to be the way to go, right? Because I mean, you're not going to de- derail um, what Kyle's doing, right? You like, I mean, like you, I mean, I feel like that's almost sidetracking him from from his main event, not his main, but his singles run, whatever. 
Yeah. By trying to, you know, and, and what are you doing with Roddy? So put Roddy in there. Put Roddy in there. Uh, they're the only two, I think, that technically weren't tag team champions in the Unspeed era because they had, really? they've all paired with one another and they were all champions. Uh, Bobby was oh, champion with Kyle. Yeah, when right. Injured, Adam took over and was champion with Kyle. Kyle and Roddy were champions together. Um, I think Bobby didn't has never teamed with Roderick. Well, that's a lie. I think they teamed. I'm sure they have. They teamed, but they never won the tag titles together. So, yeah, um, they could go up to the tag titles there. Mm-hmm. Um, and to com- to uh, clarify, Rob, uh, Roderick is Ravishing Roderick Strong. I gave them all the nicknames. Of course, actually, the only one that really stuck is Cool Kyle because they actually use that in NXT. So. Um, so wait, wait, wait. Are you taking credit for the Cool Kyle thing? I am. Did you call him Cool Kyle or did they say it and then you said it? No, I think it was Undisputed Era that declared Kyle Cool Kyle. So. Okay. Before they actually started using Cool Kyle. So. All right. Just making sure. No, no, no. Um, I can. I can. I, you know, I kept up with it. No, so. I'll take partial credit for it. There you go. I knew you were going to try and claim some credit. Uh, Mercedes Mar- Martinez squashed uh, Zeta Ramirez mm. and then was marked. She's apparently a mark now, but she was marked by uh, <laughs> Tian. Tian Shaw? Is this the one with the mask? Yes, the, the creepy uh, yeah. Chinese uh, trio. Because uh, I never I never found out how the last, like, their last feud ended. Like, it just kind of ended abruptly. With okay, so I, I didn't miss anything crazy, right? Because I feel like like there was no... They just anything. said, they Casey and uh, Caden just kind of said, oh, we're moving on. We're done with them. So oh. they didn't even try to get revenge or anything. Yeah, all right. Yeah, okay. So they moved on. All right. So um, it's clear that Martinez is going to be the next victim here. All right, let's talk about it. The highlight of the week. Let's talk about the million dollar face off, which yes. at first was like, okay, that's, you know, it's fine. It's Cameron Grimes, million dollar man. Yes, wonderful. Let's I mean, talk about the real reason. Hey, now, hey, now. Let's, that's not quite this short. Let's, let's talk about the real short. reason why it worked out so well and why the, the real reason why it was the arguably best segment of the week. Mm-hmm. Cameron Grimes came out. Yep. Ted DiBiase came out. Yep. You know, they were my big pop. Big pop for me when when uh, another million dollar appearance. Mm-hmm. There you go. Um, and Grimes questioned DiBiase. He was cutting the babyface promo here. Uh, he questioned. Let, you know, let me tell you this real quick. Let me tell you. Go ahead. Grimes is over. I think he's over. He might be a little over, a little bit. I think he's over. So I mentioned. I mentioned this. This would have been a lot better if there was like an actual crowd. I, you know, mm-hmm. I think for for all parties involved. But from what? From what I was picking up, it, it sounds like Grimes is kind of over, or he's getting his, he's getting he's getting to that point. Um, yeah, maybe no, I'm wrong. Maybe he's paying yeah. off the crowd. I don't know. He, he's I think he is getting over with the crowd for sure. Uh, he basically said, you know, Ted DiBiase is my idol. I, you know, I get to be jerks to people and give them, you know, and be rich, and they still love me for it, you know. Um, and he was kind of in a baby face. Right, right. Um, and then we got the star here of the show here. Let's say mm. with me, James. Say with me. Come on. You know, I will say with you a little bit this time. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Right. Ready? And what do we do? We do two fingers or what do we do here? You do you, you do one, two, three, okay? All right. Yeah, but how many fingers are there? Two? Uh it's a one or yeah, it's like two. I one, think. two, all right, whatever. All right, here we go. Right, say with all me. Right. All right. L- uh, a nice. I'm catching on. I'm learning. I'm learning. There you go. So, so so I, I was impressed. I, I this I think maybe was the first time I saw him live on TV without it being some clip or something. Okay. He came out. He looked good. He's matching. Yeah. He had the yellow. He had the he had the black and the yellow Nikes. You want to talk about drip? There, that's drip there. As far as I'm the yellow concerned. sunglasses on. He had the yellow, and he looked very good. And I I thought we were going to see Ted DiBiase aligned with with LA Knight. Mm-hmm. I thought that's what we we're gonna see, and they walked out almost together. They, you know, they were they were kind of close. They were almost kind of chit chatty. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, and again, I kind of like that we're we're getting a lot of uh, DiBiase on TV for whatever the reason. I don't I don't know what the I don't know. I don't know why. I don't. But he's there, and um, I I think it helps. Yeah, I think so it helps. LA Knight cut a fantastic promo to the ring. 
Um, mm. I don't remember anything, but he's he's great on the mic. He's always been great on the mic here. He's good. He's uh, good. The thing I liked about it is he didn't take away from the segment because I was I hear million dollar you know million dollar challenge, and you know I know there's a, a DiBiase grind storyline, and then La Knight in, interrupts, and I'm like, oh, what's going on here? And then uh, you know I I, I was poo pooing the whole thing just because I you know you like him, so I kind of didn't like him, but he comes out there and and you know I'm okay with him. He's all right. I'm not, I'm not all the way in. But you might be very <laughs> soon. I think you will be very soon. Uh, okay. He hit his finishing move on Grimes, left him lane, and DiBiase, uh, what did DiBiase say? Well, well I, I, I'm not getting to DiBiase. So, again, though, I was mentioning okay. the crowd, and you, you mentioned the finisher there. I think at that moment, like, there should have been some crowd there. Like, that okay. moment alone, because I watched it, and I was like, Mm. it seemed like it fell a little flat for me. Like the impact of it wasn't there. Cause it's a nice finisher. Yeah. It just like, there was no crowd to like take it to the next level. So for me, that, that was the thing where I think NXT really needs to kind of get the crowd back in. So go ahead, go on. What did DiBiase say? Uh, he basically said, kid, you're never going to learn. And he laughed yeah. and walked out basically with the, with LA Knight. Um, rumors have been speculating that um, a former retired championship might be making his comeback. Uh, that million dollar title looks like it may be coming back. But I just don't know why. I thought if anything, we were going to see it there. I thought that million dollar challenge was going to be, you know, we're going to see the belt on, on Grimes. It's going to be Knight and Grimes at TakeOver, I think, for that million dollar title. I just feel like nothing good ever comes out of having that title back. Like, they brought it back when Junior was there and this and that. And it just, it never lasts long. It doesn't do anything. It's a great yeah. title. It's, it's, a, it's a great little thing, but yeah, you put it on two guys who have charisma. Uh, both guys have charisma here. It I could think it could out. work. It but could what work. do they do? But what happens after that is the thing. Good question. That's always the thing. It's, so, it's always meaningful for the segment, for you know, for the storyline that that you know it's meant to when it's introduced and it's great. Whatever, that's fine. You know, but what happens after that's the thing. It's just kind of like when the storyline goes away, so does the belt. Uh -huh. So that's the only thing for me. Uh, Indy Hartwell was seen backstage looking for uh, Dexter Loomis. Of course. Uh, his heart is, is, she the, is, she, is she the stalker now? Is that where we're, is that where we're going? I did. I do remember last week. I, I don't know if we picked it up, but she's now she's kind of she's kind of sus on uh, Candice LeRae. For, no, well, she she knew she found out that they were she found out right right. But she didn't seem like angry about it. She just she seemed more excited that uh, that he still. Had feelings for her, so okay, right. She was That's happy right. about that, and she looked for him, and she went in an empty room with a bunch of drawings, and his heart had been basically broken because uh, she was kind of talking trash about him last week before she found out about everything. Mm -hmm. So right. his heart's broken. Okay. Uh, next up, we got an, a fabulous in-ring debut of one Frankie Monet uh, mm -hmm. taking on Cora Jade. Uh, this is basically a squash match. Uh, great performance by Frankie Monet. Uh, John Morrison was live tweeting throughout the whole show. I believe mm -hmm. he was there backstage as well. Uh, he got a picture with her. Uh, of course, John Morrison and Frankie are uh, a couple. I don't know if they're married. They're together. I think they are married, uh, yeah. but they're together. So good good moment for her. Uh, she looks yeah. star. Her finishing move is the glam slam. Even Beth Phoenix said that looked familiar. So, uh, I mean, she used that move before she got here. So, uh, but nice to see uh, her make her, her debut there. Um, we didn't talk about Hit Row, but they basically cut a promo saying they're going, they're going after the titles. So, who is that? Uh, Hit Row. That's Swerve. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He um, had that new big dude with him. Well, not, I don't know if they're new, but yeah. there's one dude who looked pretty big. I saw that, yeah. Uh, finally, our main event between Karrion Cross defending the NXT Championship against Finn Balor. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal match. Um, Finn Balor lost. I mean, I'm not going to go into detail. Go watch the match. It's a good match, um, mm -hmm. especially the last you know, half of it. Um, Finn Balor lost. He passed out with the yep. submission. And uh, looks like this might have been his last day there. Might be seeing him uh, on the road very soon. Maybe, but I did hear, you know, I, I'm not saying there's anything official, but there's there were people on my timeline 
asking for a, a demon versus cross match in Hell in the Cell or something. Not that it's going to happen at the next pay per view or anything, but no, it's not because. But people want more, though, it seems. Next week, uh, it's been confirmed. Kyle, cool Kyle mm-hmm. will okay. face uh, Johnny Gargano and okay. done in a triple threat. The winner will face Karrion Cross at NXT TakeOver in your house. Mm. He's done. Okay, so that's he's okay, done. So that, that's why you talk. That's why you think uh, the Balor might be done then, huh? Um, yeah, no. I mean, he also looked like he was definitely taking it in on his entrance. Gotcha, I think gotcha. He knew it was his last day on NXT, so um, I think it, he he did what a run. If it is, oh, yeah. it was his last day. It was mm-hmm. phenomenal. So um, yeah, that was NXT. Um, let's talk about uh, WWE bios. Uh, the ones I'm talking about are Shawn Michaels and Ultimate Warrior. Mm-hmm. I'll quickly just go through them a bit. Um, highly recommend you guys watch and you know decide for yourselves whether um, they're great quality or not. Because I know there were some complaints, especially about Ultimate Warrior one. Um, considering there is a Dark Side episode coming. Uh, it's already out as this airs. Um, but basically, the Shawn Michaels one went through his career. I didn't realize how many drugs he took, um, specifically in early on. Um, oh, what do you mean? What do you mean? Uh, well, it was more than painkillers. Because I, I hadn't known about the painkillers in the 90s when he was hurt and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize he was more, you know, specifically with Marty Jannetty. Um, well, he was yeah. doing apparently every week. Um, but I didn't know that, um, you know, they went through his career, um, and they were very honest, you know, they didn't shy away from anything. Um, yeah. During the rocker days, Rob, um, so was, they didn't shy away was, during it. Was Marty in the documentary? He was, he was interviewed. Um, oh, yeah, he was there. Um, they interviewed him for that, for the rockers era. Uh, they okay. talked about, uh, the the single era. They talked about the issues with Brett. So Brett is featured here. Uh, he was interviewed mm-hmm. as well. I'm sure you like that. They obviously exactly. mentioned the screw job. It's been told hundreds of times in different documentaries now. Um, and then we get to, I mean, what I like about it was they, they, they talk about uh, his NXT, his, what he's doing now. Mm-hmm. I mean, they go through him going, helping train. I mean, Adam Cole is there, of course. Amazing Adam. Uh, Johnny Gargano's interview. They, he's going through the matches with them, specifically the ladder match that they had at TakeOver last year for the North American title. It was like the six-man mm-hmm. ladder match. So, you know, they're, they're building up toward that, which is NXT TakeOver 30. Um, and so, he, you know, it's it's nice to go back and forth. Um, even uh, Jim Cornette, old Jim Cornette, who absolutely despise, despises Shawn Michaels, mm-hmm. uh, he went through this and you know, he's he said uh, they they almost got me to kind of uh, forgive him. Um, he said if he had if he had a sense of forgiveness, uh, because obviously by the end of it, Sean is a changed person. Uh, it's one thing it, I will mention. Everyone mentions that Sean was hard to deal with in the '90s. He wasn't a very good person to be around. Uh, mm-hmm. They were very blunt about that. He himself was very blunt about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked about. Triple H having to carry him to his hotel room every night mm-hmm. and check up on him every couple of hours to make sure he's still breathing. That um, sounds about right. <laughs> so definitely worth the watch. Uh, it was, I mean, my favorite one so far. Um, and then uh, the Warrior one. Warrior one I, I enjoyed. It wasn't as, uh, I guess, entertaining as, as the other one, but... Uh, it was honest. Uh, they went through kind of some of his stuff. He basically didn't have a father figure. So he was always looking for that, that the figure. Mm-hmm. He looked to Vince a lot as being a father figure. Um, and he was hurt whenever you know, they mentioned the whole uh, writing, getting suspended because he tried to get more money out of Vince and Vince didn't appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole steroid thing happened and you know, all that. And then, you know, in the later years of self-destruction of the Ultimate Warrior DVD that happened. Um, mm-hmm. And then some controversies outside of wrestling where, you know, he, he 
you know, said some pretty not so nice things, I guess, about certain people. Yep. Um, they acknowledge that, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's interesting to see. They did put a focus on his daughters. Uh, one of them was actually training boxing and boxing. And the other one was kind of doing some ballerina. So they showed a bunch of footage of them kind of keeping his their, their father's legacy alive. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was kind of the whole thing there is like, oh, yeah, you know, he's gone. And he kind of made peace when he, you know, right before he, you know, he left. But yeah. at the end, uh, at the end, you know, his spirit still lives within his daughters and, you know, all that. So uh, two good documentaries uh, I enjoyed. Definitely worth to check out there, and um, yeah. So there, there's that there. Uh, okay. Something I wanted to mention really quick, uh, as we're recording this today, Wednesday the twenty sixth. It is officially the fifteenth anniversary of the coronation of one King Buka. Mm. So fifteen years to the day there. Didn't know where uh, you're going with that one. Okay. Um, yeah, some other stuff though. Well, we can talk about Raw a little bit. I don't know if we really touched a whole lot on Raw today. Um, 1.6 million, which is uh, apparently one of the lower ones, um, viewership wise, uh, for the year. And obviously, a lot of that has to do with the NBA playoffs that is that are kind of going on and taking place. I will say this was probably the best episode since WrestleMania because they actually mm-hmm. had matches. Uh, we had an Xavier Woods giving a star making performance against Riddle in a phenomenal mm-hmm. match. Um, you had Brian, Alvarez, match. Uh, Brian Alvarez did approve of that match. He, he didn't tweet a whole lot of it. He said it was a very good match, though. So, yeah. So, obviously, that one was, um, you know, and for me, I mean, I don't see a lot of Woods in action. So, good to see him in the ring. Absolutely. Kofi Kingston, his other, his tag team partner, mm-hmm. New Day Brothers, had a great match with Drew McIntyre to kick off the show, and we're getting a rematch. Uh, next week, and the winner will face yeah. last and Hell in the Cell. So that's so gonna we're happen. Gonna, we're getting another run here, I guess, with Kofi, right? So what was that? It was like a twenty-minute match with Drew, only for there to be no winner. So mm-hmm. why not do it again next week? Why not? Let's do that again. Um, I think we covered mostly everything. Uh, but next week, hopefully, we'll have some more Hell in the Cell stuff. Uh, we'll mm-hmm. be talking uh, as we get closer to getting fans back in the crowd. Of course, uh, we're going to talk more about our, our tribal chief. Say it with me, James. Come on. I acknowledge Roman look, Reigns. Look, as- look, look, look. You got the LA Knight thing. Don't push it. Okay. All right. Say it with me then. Come on. One more time. One more time. All right. Here we go. Ready? One. You two, two, Come on, Rob. You too. One, two, three. L- L-A Knight. There we go. This episode has been too sweet. It, <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah.